Welcome, I'll be reacting to The Slipper and the Rose. I'm assuming this is fairy tale related, so I asked over on Patreon, what was your favorite fairy tale when you were growing up? Swan Lake had a vote, The Gingerbread Man from Lady Bird Books, Fractured Fairy Tale Sleeping Beauty from Bullwinkle and Friends, where apparently the prince builds a theme park around her, The Land of Far Away, several votes for The Hobbit, and one for a tale about a king who asked his daughters what they thought of him. The first said, I love you like sugar, the next like honey, and the third said, I love you like salt. The king was furious and tossed her out. Many years later, she's become a famous chef with her own restaurant and the king comes to visit, not knowing it's hers, and she serves him dishes all without salt. And by the end, the king is horrified. Why is there no salt? This needs salt to work. And she steps out and reveals herself. Interestingly, this is very similar to my favorite growing up and still to this day, Kupti and Imani, where the youngest princess again speaks her mind to her father. The king throws her out on the street, but she makes her own way. She builds her own life. Many years later, she becomes so famous that he finds her again and realizes that they are equals and that she was right all along. Not sure what this particular genre is called in fairy tale land, but I love it. The rejected by your parents, but you did okay anyway fairy tales. <laughs> but with this title, I'm guessing the movie will be about Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty or Beauty and the Beast. The rose could go either way there. As always, this is a commentary. It is not a market substitute. Please support the original and no spoilers in the comments when recommending films. Please just the title and year of release. Otherwise your vote won't be counted. Cinderella, okay. I figured she'd be involved. Will it be a fur or glass slipper? I still like Ever After the best of all the Cinderella stories. Quite the spectacular setting so far. Oh, what a lovely symmetry. Is this where her mother's tree is? I'm curious to see which of the many myriad versions of Cinderella they will do. I don't know if there will be a tree or not. I think I saw a fairy godmother mention, so I don't know. Maybe they'll go that route. The version where it's her mother's spirit is just so much more moving, I think, than a random sparkly person showing up. Ooh, nice set. A prince's lot is nothing more than a bore. Your face cracks rather easily, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, these are definitely old friends. Will come our dear and loyal subject. The other unch was Lord High Chamberlain. Five, six, seven. The High Chamberlain. I did not find the lady of your choice to be my choice. Oh, right. We are returned. Any simple peasant is afforded the ability in love. It's a musical. You're probably used to this little disclaimer. YouTube adores. They live for blocking videos that have music, especially singing. But I will try my absolute best to keep in at least a little bit. Due to my high breeding, I'm continually acceding to demands I find increasingly untenable. <laughs> All I ask. And it's this is very Gilbert and Sullivan. Why can't I be two people? Split myself right in half. Go bunburying. For a royal prince, there's no such word as me. It's always we. So rightfully. I should be two or three. Don't you agree? <laughs> it's not for me to say, Your Royal Highness. This song where he's singing about, why can't there be two of me, really seems like it's more appropriate for the opening of Giselle, where the prince is exactly like this. He ends up disguising himself, going out to the village. Giselle falls in love with him, and then we all know what happens. Does not end well. 
But this particular song would be so perfect for a Giselle musical. Before we die. Die? Who's died? <laughs> oh, I like her already. Our dear son. We are, Is we he are. holding a huge D6? Are they playing a game? His Royal Highness, the Prince oh, something's going on there. Why is this chap in the back like this? Is this a thing in the court? It's a bit ostentatious. That's the part I like best. I sometimes give medals to a whole regiment. <laughs> All of your majesty. The queen is so hilarious. Has there been an uprising? No, Your Majesty. It's just the Duke of Montague. Is he still alive? I thought we buried him. Oh my. Kings never cheat. They adapt to Okay, they are playing a game. So maybe this is part of the game. There's one in each corner, like this. I'm very curious about how this is played. They're rolling the d6. What is going on? It will be for the convenience of love rather than the convenience of convenience. Love? Did he say love? They're like, I don't, I don't understand love. Why should love enter into it at all? Princess Susan. Princess Karen. Princess Kate. Find oh. the mate. <laughs> they, they couldn't have known. Look at me. Look at us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at us. What has love? Yeah, we we are. That's why he wants to have a love match, I think. With an army that could fortify our throne. Mm, that is important. Why procrastinate and stay uh, the hand? Yeah, uh, you can't sit there. Find a mate, our yes. cousin. I wish men still dress like this. It's so cool. Look at this. It's beautiful. All the embroidery. I really like how kind of tongue-in-cheek this is. Like, they're being serious and kind of playing it straight, but they're also realizing that it is a little bit absurd, and they're just kind of leaning into that, which is great. I'm counting mother, two stepsisters, and a potential Cinderella here. Below stairs, and do not think you will find sympathy with the staff. The staff have been dismissed. You are now the staff. To take oh my. orders instead of giving them. I mean, this is still vicious, but I kind of can understand the stepmother thinking, I need to save money. I don't like the stepdaughter. Aha! A brilliant plan has emerged. Fire the entire staff and get free help. Hmm. There's a kind of sinister logic to it. Give me your cloak, girl. You will not be needing it down there. Oh, that's a beautiful dress, too. And do not keep us waiting for the soup. Come along, my doves. Well, soup takes a while, though. I mean, she kind of does need to keep you waiting for the soup. Otherwise, it won't taste as good. It needs to steep. Nice, low simmer for a while. Yeah, and if anyone doesn't see her at social functions anymore and asks, the stepmother can be like, oh, she's overcome with grief. She doesn't leave the house anymore. Now the mice are still here. They're a bit more ominous in this version. I'm loving the costuming. It's actually fairly vaguely accurate. I mean, a lot more accurate than I've seen other films. Like that little hat that was tilted. This is a lovely, very haunting song. Lovely scenery here. Ah, must be the royal mausoleum. Much fancier. Gorgeous. Hey, you both like cemeteries. Got something in common there. There's the rose. No matter what I do or don't do, no matter how I do it or don't do it, my last appointment is here. Mm. I am three months away from completing 
paying off my cemetery plot. I am so excited. So I feel this. There's something very special about standing in the place where you know you're going to be buried. Like, I don't know, it's hard to describe. It's, it's just amazing. Yes, I'll be slipped into the beautiful family crypt. Uh-huh. Ho, 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 what a comforting right. thing to know. I love this scene. The day he died, the people cried. They cried? They cried three cheers. <laughs> oh, 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 what a oh, comforting dear. thing to see. Serene and great, still getting nothing done. What about <gasps> King Lloyd? He's just going around roasting them. Till the day he was beheaded. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> what a comforting thing to know. This is awesome. But where your royal bones will go, yes, I'll be slipped <laughs> into the beautiful family crypt. Oh, dear. Ho, oh, oh, ho, he, what a comforting thing for you to see. I would do anything to choreograph this dance sequence. It's like, stepmother, the prince is in the crypt singing. Yes, great in tradition and spirit. Culture. In fact, we are small. Yeah, yeah. So we have to have a plan. We'll make sure that she's got teeth. He's got an obsession about them having teeth. I thought a ball. A ball. I remember my first ball. Yes, well, we don't want to go into the realms of fantasy. What else? <laughs> I have prepared a list, Your Majesty. The very atmosphere of love. Put him on the retirement list. I shall make a royal decision. That's king. So we must be protocolically correct. Good. This is actually a very good point. Seating charts at events like this are crucial. Yes, the kingdom will be right. We have a system to protect. Check and double check and protocolically correct. Protocolically correct. That was cute. You should have felt something. Losing my touch. Ah, very good. Could Henry. I come in and rest by your fire, please? I've been traveling a long way. I haven't got a dog. Isn't he yours? Where did he come from? He oh, came in cute. when I came in. Oh, thank you, fairy godmother. <laughs> A bride finding ball. A bride finding ball. Well, I'm glad someone's excited. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I do like the excuse to seal the castles. <gasps> We're in Scotland. She won't faint, though. Not a Scottish princess. Yes. Not disappointing. I don't know, I like Scotland better. I like the touch that she's still in the same gown. Ugh, I feel this. I do all hand sewing myself, and it takes a long time. You're constantly stabbing yourself. Okay, so the fairy godmother helped Robin Hood and Maid Marian get together? Now that's a story I want to hear. As if it had been laid on red hot coals. Is she a romance novelist? That's pretty funny. Hansel? Gretel? Hopefully just named for them. Do be quiet, Henrietta. I can't think. Oh, Henrietta. Now, that? Oh. Ah. So it's like Charmed then, the original Charmed, where they cannot use their magic to help themselves. Blue, pink, blue, pink. Oh, I like the purple one the best. Me go to the ball? Well, of course. That is what you were wishing, isn't it? I can borrow a bit until midnight. Right. Now. It's nice that she gave a little explanation there of why the magic stops at midnight, of she wasn't really planning to help Cinderella, she just heard her wishing, and 
all her magic is currently in use with other people. Like she mentioned earlier, she had to go see the Little Mermaid and help these other people. So she's here going, all right, well, I don't have very much magic left, so let's kind of stretch it to midnight, and then that's the cutoff here. That's the most reasonable explanation for it I've ever heard. Well, you just have to go as you are. <laughs> Suddenly it happens and the dream comes true. What a cute little shepherdess hat, too, that she has on right now. Oh. <laughs> This reminds me of the Beatrix Potter tales from, I think, the Royal Ballet. Did they maybe borrow the costumes from the Royal? Let's see, when was the tales of Beatrix Potter? 1971, they made a film of it, I think. But did they use the costumes for this movie? And obviously those are ballet dancers. Frederick Ashton would still have been around in 1976. That's only five years later. Michael Coleman was a ballet dancer with the Royal Ballet who performed in The Tale of Beatrix Potter as Jeremy Fisher and The Slipper and the Rose. So there is a connection. I'm not making this up. This has got to be the same chap who played Jeremy for sure, right? I'm just saying. I'm seeing a lot of pastel. If someone showed up in black or something, I feel like that would be the statement piece. Or Claire in her famous red dress. This is definitely the Barbie ball. Lots of pink here. I really like the choreography here. Their hands are like almost touching and then going kind of a parallel with each other. I've been very impressed by the dance choreography overall so far. Who can she be? I have no idea, Your Majesty. She's not on my list. Your list, your list, your list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He has whiskey in there. Most irregular. Most irregular. It was never my inclination to behave like this. And I'm not saying it very well. No, you're not. <laughs> I have always believed that marriage should begin with love. Oh, she's wearing a rose. There's always a rose when the two of them are together. Like there was a rose in the crypt. There's a rose on her dress. That's definitely a deliberate choice. His Majesty requests an audience with the Princess Incognita. Oh no, midnight. He's gotta run. Father. You frightened her, you fool! Oh, I love the petals. And her dress is turning back. Ah, oh, there we are. Yeah. And they'll think it's just some servant. Nobody will stop her. Stars began to zoom when he danced with me. In his arms I was ascending. I could have danced all night. And still have begged for more. I could have spread my wings and done a thousand things. All right, definitely same genre of music here. The I just got back from a ball and I feel amazing. Around the room when she danced with me. Very Anglo-Saxon. Rainbows raced around the room.
Well, he's smitten. In short, I fulfill my side of the bargain. True, I can't fault him there. And then by some miracle, I find the lady of my choice. And what happens? She vanishes. The lovely lady Caroline would be a proper wife, you see. But my father was a servant, and my mother same as he. John might remind him, uh, you know, not everyone's a noble. Maybe you should check among we normal people. Okay, I'm sorry, but the scullery maid outfits are super cute. I'm not sure if this is a film or a ballet that occasionally has talking. And I like it. <laughs> Very Mary Poppins. That was a really good scene. Ah, good boy. Look over there! John! I like that he recognized her immediately. None of that, oh, can you try this on? Are you the right person? No, he took one look and was like, it's you, which is nice. And in my happiness, I forgive you all. That's very magnanimous of her. Forgive me? But it does seem to me that she's most unsuitably dressed for such a solemn occasion. You're quite right, Grandmama. <laughs> It's something I shall correct immediately. <laughs> Father, by your leave. My Lord Chamberlain. My lady. More roses in the foreground. But the times demand something different. A prince must make a marriage of alliance with the princess of the blood royal. I see nothing but war and destruction. Unless a sacrifice is made. I would kind of like a different ending where she chooses to go to free him to do his duty and they can never be together. Kind of like the prisoner of Senda. I would not be upset. I love unhappy endings to love stories. Tell him, tell him that it wasn't love. Make him hate my memory. Make him glad he's free. I really like this twist. And what a song. That was an amazing performance right there. Wow. But I'd really like is all out war to commence. We get a battle scene in the next 10 minutes and she comes out to the battle and holds his body in her arms as he breathes his final breath. She goes, I loved you all this time. I loved you. And then he dies. But it's probably not gonna happen that way, alas. <laughs> oh, classic pastoral. Very Rokoko. <laughs> She's like, I leave for five minutes. I sometimes wish I could retire. Unless I'm on the spot to take care of every little detail, something always goes wrong. <laughs> I can definitely see where there are touches of inspiration that Ever After took from this film. Her headdress looks a lot like Queen Amidala's when she sees Anakin for the first time after he's grown up. The shape, not the color. <laughs> breathe. Just breathe. This is going to create a major diplomatic incident, though. Maybe I'll get my battle scene after all. Is the ceremony over? What a relief! Isn't she ravishing? But, uh, am I to understand? Yes, anything. Well, all right, that's sorted. Where's 
Were they walking toward a statue of Aphrodite? Because that would be kind of perfect. It's even like a ballet, the way they're doing the bows. <laughs> Fred! The dog is named Fred. How adorable is that? Alright, Dowager, you, you are a queen. Good job on the costumes, everyone. And the wigs. The producers wish to acknowledge with thanks for the help and cooperation received from the Royal Ballet London. Yes, I knew that there was a Tales of Beatrix Potter connection. Ever After will always be my favorite Cinderella. It's just absolute perfection, but this one is definitely my number two. I thought they did a great job. It's basically a ballet that was filmed with scenes of dialogue added in between, so great job everyone. Loved it. Thank you to everyone who suggested it. Brianna, Roger, they don't belong here. <laughs> this is so funny. It's an ad for Outlander, which I just reacted to about half an hour ago. Interesting that they chose this scene. I thought this was in last season. Oh, now here is an ad for Outlander with a new scene. Although I still kind of wish Claire had stayed on the ship, just for selfish reasons of my own. But this was a cute scene. I love the officer where he's like, you can't do that. Excuse me. This is not permitted. <laughs> she would have killed someone before she finished. Another Outlander ad. So you decided to bear that cross for her. But this is a huge spoiler. Why would they put it in an ad? Stars. 